Okay, let's move on uh, to the next topic. Okay, next topic we are going to, in the next, in this topic we are going to learn about the human circulatory system. So, uh, just now we have learned about the respiratory system. So, what happens to the uh, blood that is being absorbed into, uh, sorry, what happens to the oxygen that is being absorbed into the blood? Okay, so this is where uh, we will learn under the human circulatory system. Huh? Now, uh, what is a circulatory system? What are the components of the or the parts in a circulatory system? Okay, so what you need to know under the circulatory system is the heart, the blood vessels, and the blood. So you need to know that the human circulatory system it consists of the the heart, the blood, and the blood vessels. And these parts work together to transport substances throughout the body. So in plants, we learn about the uh, you know, the food carrying tube and the water carrying tube. But in humans, okay, the heart, the blood, and the blood vessels form the uh, transport system in humans. Okay. Now let's take a look at the heart. The heart is a muscular organ that is about the size of, of the fist. Okay. So what the size of fist, this is yeah, the, the size of the heart. So it lies between the two lungs in our chest. So it acts like a pump and works by relaxing and contracting continuously to pump blood to all parts of the body. Okay. Now, does our heart ever stop pumping? No. Huh? If the heart stops pumping, uh, then you will die. Okay. Some students think that, oh, teacher, when we sleep, the heart stops pumping huh? because we are sleeping. Not true. Eh? Even when we are sleeping, we need to get oxygen to all parts of our body and we need to get food to all parts of our body. Eh? Our heart will still pump and blood will still move all around our body even though when we are sleeping. Okay, when the heart pumps, it produces a lap dub sound eh? in each heartbeat. All right? So the heart rate is the number of times the heart beats per minute. Okay, the heart rate is number of times the heart beats per minute and our heart rate depends on our age and the heart and the health and the type of activity that we carry out okay do you know how to measure your heartbeat anyone okay how do you measure your heartbeat okay a few ways if you do not have uh you know if you do not have the stethoscope so what you can do is that you can feel the this part okay the, the part underneath your your jawline Okay, so you can feel your heartbeat or you can use the your wrist. Okay, the wrist to, to feel your heartbeat. Okay, try it now. See whether you can uh, you can uh, you know hear your own uh, heartbeat. Uh, Mikael say you can use your Apple Watch. Huh? Apple Watch you can measure your heartbeat. Huh? Oh, very good. Huh? You can say, oh, you don't have a heartbeat. Just use Apple Watch. Okay, I'm not so rich to off, uh, you know to be able to afford Apple Watch. Huh? Okay, so you cannot hear it. Try it. Huh? You must be able to feel. Huh? If not, you are a ghost. Okay. Okay, let's think about it. Why do our heart rate and breathing rate increases when we exercise? Anyone? Why do our heart rate and breathing rate increase when we exercise? You need more oxygen. Why do we need to? Why do we need more oxygen when we exercise? Yes, we need more energy, right? So when we exercise, we are stretching our muscles, all right? We are stretching the different parts of our body, okay? and we are burning more energy. So when we need more energy, okay, we need more oxygen okay, to be able to do our exercise. Uh, so the more exercise, the more strenuous the exercise. Okay, our heart rate and our heartbeat and the breathing rate will be faster. Okay. All right. Now, blood vessels. Now, blood vessels transport blood from the heart to all parts of the body. Okay. And from the other parts of the body back to the heart. So, the blood vessels, okay, there are different types of blood vessels uh, depending on the size. Huh? The bigger blood vessels are called the arteries. 
Okay, so these are the strongest and the and the biggest uh, blood vessels. Okay, uh, in the heart, uh, at the heart around our heart. Okay, the blood vessels are the arteries where it needs to be very very strong, need to be very thick. And then you have the veins. Okay, in our different parts of the body, and the smaller blood vessels, the smallest blood vessels are called the capillaries. Okay. So what's the function of the blood vessels? To transport blood from the heart to all parts of the body and from the other parts of the body back to the heart. All right? Okay, let's take a look at uh, this diagram here. So you have the lungs, okay, where the lungs transport or gives oxygen to the heart. Okay, and the oxygen is transported to all parts of the body through the blood vessels. Okay, so this is the upper part of the body, such as the head and arm, and this is the lower part of the body, okay, such as the stomach and the legs. Okay, question, which arrow represents the flow of blood that contains more oxygen or rich in oxygen? Anyone? The red, huh? Okay, very good. Why the red? Because, number one, when we breathe in, okay, through our nose and goes to the lungs, and the lungs is where we absorb the oxygen, right? Okay, so this, this arrow here will represent, okay, represent the blood that is rich in oxygen, right? Because it is just coming from the lungs. Okay, and this oxygen, the heart will pump to all parts of our body, the upper part of our body, the lower part of our body, all parts of our body. So once the oxygen are used in respiration, so the carbon dioxide, Okay, that is produced will be transported back. Okay, because we have to give out this carbon dioxide and then in exchange back for the oxygen, right? So the carbon dioxide will be given out. Okay, go back to the heart and then it goes back to the to the lungs. Okay, so this blue line here will be poor in oxygen. I repeat again, the blue lines here will be poor in oxygen, while the red lines here, red. Uh, arrows here, it is rich in oxygen. On the other hand, the blue color lines, arrows here will be uh, rich in carbon dioxide but poor in oxygen. Here, the red line here will be rich in oxygen but poor in carbon dioxide. Okay, so, you must know this diagram very well. Huh? So, it comes up quite a lot of time in the, in the exams. Okay, so let's recap. Huh? So, the blood rich in oxygen flows from the lungs. Okay, to the heart, and then pump to all parts of the body. Right? So you can see here, red color arrow, flow of blood rich in oxygen. And the blood also transported digested food and water from the digestive system to all parts of our body. Uh, so you remember, so you can see here the integration between the circulatory system, the respiratory system, as well as the digestive system. Okay, so you can see here the integration of all the, the systems. Eh? So it needs okay, to work together so that okay, uh, human have a, a healthy body. So blood, not only it transport oxygen and carbon dioxide, it also transport digested food and water from the digestive system to all parts of our, of our body. Okay, so you can see here very nicely the integration between the different systems in the human body, right? Okay, now so the blood transport carbon dioxide and waste materials away from the various parts of our body. So the blood returns to the heart, okay, returns to the heart and is sent to the lungs. And this is where the carbon dioxide is removed and then oxygen is taken in. Okay, so you can see that there's a, there's a cycle going on. Okay. After the carbon dioxide is removed, and then oxygen is taken in again when we breathe in and being absorbed okay, uh, by the lungs and absorbed into the, the blood and carries to all parts of the body. Okay, and then you can see the cycle will continue going on and on and on. Eh? So you can see here, the circulatory system works together. It okay, works together with the digestive and the respiratory system so that our body can function well. 
So if any parts of our body is, you know, it is uh, not functioning well, okay, any parts, uh, for example, let's say, uh, you know, the, our heart having, you know, heart problems, okay, or we are, we are having some digestive uh, problems, okay, so it will affect all parts of our, of our body. Yeah? Why? Because you can see that all parts of the body, okay, the circulatory system, digestive system, and respiratory system, they work together so that the body can function well. Okay. And the food is di uh, digested by the digestive system, and digested food are absorbed into the blood in the circulatory system. Okay. And carbon dioxide from the blood in the circulatory system enters the lungs, it is then removed from the respiratory system during breathing, and oxygen enters the respiratory system during breathing, it is then absorbed into the blood in the circulatory system. Digested food, water and oxygen are transported by the blood in the circulatory system to all parts of the body. The digested food, water and oxygen are transported in the blood in the circulatory system to all parts of our body. Yeah? Because all parts of our body, we need food, we need water and we need oxygen. And these substances are then used by the body parts. Okay, let's recap. Eh? The circulatory system consists of the heart, the blood vessels and the, and the blood. Eh? <coughs> and the heart pumps blood to all parts of the body and blood in the blood vessels transport digested food and oxygen to all parts of the body. It also transport carbon dioxide and waste products away from the body for removal. And the circulatory system works together with the digestive and the respiratory system to transport digested food and oxygen to all parts of the body. And these organ systems also ensure that carbon dioxide and waste materials are transported away from the parts of the body and removed. Okay? Alright. So we have come 